question. So, a speaker is uh, uh, Daisuke Beki-san. Uh, title is a plus theoretic analysis of a uh, weak crossover. Then please start. Hey, thank you, Sano-san. Uh, uh, today, I'm going to talk about the plus theoretic analysis of weak crossover. Uh, I'm Daisuke Beki from Autonomy University. And first of all, uh, let's introduce uh, what uh, DTS is. So it's um, it's a, a shorthand of uh, a dependent type semantics, uh, which is a framework for uh, natural language semantics, which we have uh, developed uh, for several years. Uh, working, we, we have been working on this uh, for several years. And it has four features. Uh, the first of all, uh, it's a proof theoretic semantics or verificationist uh, semantics. Uh, so it's a bit different from the uh, mainstream uh, truth conditional or module theoretic semantics, or even uh, dynamic semantics uh, using the notion of context change potentials. And secondly, uh, it's a discourse semantics. So its main focus, empirical focus is on the uh, anaphora presupposition, the focuses and those uh, things. So it's a kind of a proof theoretic alternative to dynamic semantics like uh, DLTs, uh, DPLs. And thirdly, it's a free compositional semantics. So uh, it has the uh, very transparent semantics and the semantic composition is the uh, homomorphic image of syntactic structure of lexical grammars. And fourthly, uh, it's a comp uh, compositional semantics. Uh, we actually implemented it uh, by uh, Haskell programming languages. And uh, uh, we expect it to have some applications to natural language processing tasks such as RPE or Q&A systems. Um, and uh, here's uh, our uh, repository. You can find the uh, source code here. Uh, if you're interested in it, uh, uh, please uh, talk to me in the coffee break. And uh, it has a certain history uh, starting uh, from the Sandholm uh, 1986. And many people uh, have worked on uh, the possibility that a dependent type is a good candidate for describing the natural language semantics. And our work on uh, 2014 and 2017 uh, gives this, this, this discipline uh, full compositionality. So uh, since then, uh, it works as a, uh, you know, uh, in full-fledged semantic theory. And we have uh, analyzed uh, many, you know, not, not many, but several uh, <laughs> semantic uh, phenomena based on DTS, uh, which includes uh, analysis of generalized quantifiers, uh, honorification, uh, conventional implicatures, and those stuff. And uh, now uh, we uh, reach to the uh, main theme of the, my talk, uh, which is a quantificational weak crossover. Actually, uh, this is uh, exemplified by 1A and 1B, uh, which is very classical paradigm. Everybody, everyone know this uh, in, from the textbook. But uh, we recently found out that um, uh, dependent type semantics is uh, kind of difficult to you know, uh, explain the per, uh, asymmetry between 1A and 1B. So it fails to explain weak crossover effect. So uh, let, uh, this is classical paradigm, but let me go over uh, briefly uh, what it is. So 1A is like every boy praised his father. This is okay with a bound variable, bound variable uh, anaphora reading between every boy and his. Uh, whereas in 1B, his father praised every boy is, uh, well, doesn't provide that reading uh, under the same uh, BBA reading. So the only difference between 1A and 1B is the uh, you know, uh, difference between the syntactic uh, structural confutation between the quantifier and the pronoun. In 1A, every boy segments his, uh, uh, while you know, in 1B, it doesn't. So um, in order to uh, explain this, um, well, uh, there are several uh, syntactic analysis uh, in the history, but uh, we somehow expect that um, pure, you know, purely semantic analysis for WCO is uh, possible. And uh, dependent type semantics, uh, however, um, while correctly predicts the availability of BVA reading in 1A, it wrongly predicts that BVA reading uh, in 1B is also available. So it has the right prediction and the wrong predictions. So I will talk about the uh, right prediction first and the wrong prediction uh, afterwards. 
And the uh, right prediction, uh, prediction will uh, demonstrate how DTS uh, deal with uh, the bound variable anaphora. And the wrong prediction uh, will point out what, what, is, uh, what is the source of the problem. Okay, uh, starting, uh, starting from the right predictions. So we have to uh, assume some um, <clears throat> syntactic theory. Uh, we, we use here uh, CCG, which is my favorite, but you can adopt any kind of uh, lexical, uh, lexical grammar that you like. And uh, um, whatever the choice is, the syntactic structure 1A and 1B uh, would be something like this. Um, and if given uh, lexical items and semantic representation for lexical items, uh, those syntactic structures would be mapped to semantic composition. And this is the semantic representation uh, by means of DTS. So boy, a boy and father is just a simple uh, uh, one-place predicate. Placed is a two-place predicate. And every um, uses uh, slightly uh, you know, unknown uh, form of like, uh, semantic representations. And that, that is called uh, pi type and uh, has, the, has this form. And actually, uh, this is a... Uh, uh, Unification of universal quantifier and impl implication independent type theory. And it roughly reads as uh, for any entity that has the property specified by N, that is a common noun, uh, it, uh, the first projection of it, that is this entity, uh, satisfies this P uh, that is given by this uh, predicate. Okay, that is exactly the, what every means, right? And his is represented by a so-called sigma type that is, uh, you know, that uses the notation, uh, you know, uh, this uh, times uh, symbol. Uh, actually, the sigma type has this form or this form, uh, the latter one is called the vertical notation. And this is uh, a unification of existential quantification and conjunctions in dependent type theory. And uh, moreover, um, his contains some uh, uh, special symbol, uh, which we call asterand, and that introduces under specified terms. And that is our two main tool for uh, representing anaphora and presupposition triggers. And this has a special um, definitions. So uh, actually uh, this uh, asterand A is a control operator for uh, uh, type checking algorithm for Martin Leif type theory. A DTS is based on the Martin Leif type theory, and uh, we assume the uh, type checking or type inference algorithm for Martin Leif type theory. And uh, if we use this uh, representation, it uh, technically it first checks if the A is a well formed type, and then uh, launches a proof search uh, to find the proof of type A and uh, returns a set of uh, proof diagrams which ends uh, up in the you know, judgment uh, N colon A prime. So um, intuitively speaking, uh, this is a kind of um, unknown entity uh, which must be of type A, but we don't have yet the uh, proof for that. So uh, that, that is the uh, uh, meaning of the proof pronouns, right? So um, using these, um, we, uh, you know, conduct systematic composition like this. So every boy I placed his father is like this. So this is a pi type uh, representing the universal quantification. And uh, his father um, placed every boy. Uh, this is also a universal quantifications. Okay, but uh, here is the problem of classical DTS. So we have ended up in the exactly similar kind of semantic representation for 1A and 1B. That is, so um, this is the uh, horizontal notation and the only difference between 1A and 1B is the uh, first argument and the second argument. So in other words, uh, 1B is uh, exactly the same as 1A where uh, except that uh, first argument and the second argument of praise, praise is swapped, okay? And uh, both of them, uh, both of the first argument and second argument stays within the local context of, context of universal quantifications. That, that is a source of the lack of uh, weak crossover effect in uh, classical uh, D, DTS. So 
it's in other words, a classical DTS interprets uh, every pronoun in situ. So in the lowest position, uh, lowest argument positions. So uh, let, let me uh, show you um, how uh, DTS gives the right prediction for 1A. So this is, uh, well, uh, this is mesmerizing, but uh, this is a proof uh, checking tree for the semantic representation 1A here. So we have to check if this is a type. Uh, this is called, uh, this checking is called the uh, semantic felicity condition for DTS. Every sentence uh, of category S um, must have the semantic representation uh, whose type is type. Okay, so we need to check if uh, this holds, and uh, this is a proof diagram to show this. And uh, um, this, we, you know, the algorithm returns the set of these, these kind of proof diagrams, and it will uh, conduct the proof checking in this way. It travels the trees. So first we check uh, this part is a type, and then we check the latter part and uh, praise is uh, check if the praise is a two praise predicate. And this check if this is the pair of entities. The first uh, thing is a pair uh, given this, uh, given this um, um, local context, which, is, which comes from this. And uh, uh, this is the second argument, which contains uh, uh, his, fa his father somewhere. So um, this is his father, uh, well, I'm sorry, and this is his father. And this is represented by the underspecified term. So we first have to check if this is the rightful type and then conduct the proof search afterwards. But the problem is that uh, we had another underspecified term within uh, this type. So we will encounter uh, this underspecified term here. That is, uh, uh, in words, it says, we, well, we assume uh, some male entity. So actually, this is a search for uh, um, antecedent for his, right? So uh, we have to uh, look for a male entity from the local context, but uh, luckily uh, we can use the local context provided by the universal quantification. So uh, if we had some word knowledge, like every boy is a male, uh, we will find the proof uh, term like this. And uh, um, then, uh, okay, uh, we will, uh, the next task is that uh, we, we need to, uh, to check that, uh, well, uh, how can I spread it? Um, we will re replace the his part with what uh, is found here. And then um, we're gonna search for, uh, you know, uh, father, existence of the father. Um, so that is uh, uh, provable uh, when we have the word knowledge, like, you know, every boy has a father. And then uh, replacing the uh, another, uh, other, semantic representation, we end up with this semantic representation that is the pi type. So it's a universal quantification in which uh, this U uh, refer to this U. So this is exactly the bound variable reading. So uh, this is the you know, correct prediction uh, borne out by the classical DTS. However, um, since you know, the uh, only difference between the semantic representation of one A and one B is the first argument and the second argument, or well, uh, swapped one nut. Um, it means that, you know, this in one B, and this tree and this tree is swapped. And uh, when we conduct a uh, proof search for, you know, the antecedent of his or ante um, antecedent of um, father, uh, we can use the same local context provided by this universal quantification. So, uh, here we uh, encounter the wrong prediction of classical DTS. So uh, classical DTS doesn't predict any difference between the 1A and 1B uh, regarding the you know, uh, accessibility of anaphora or the, uh, regarding the availability of one variable reading. Okay, so this is the program uh, that we found recently. 
and uh, the classical DPS is facing the pro empirical program. So uh, here comes the proposal part. Um, so my uh, proposal is to uh, revise the uh, dependent type semantics with the new notion under specified types and replacing the under specified terms with under specified types. So under specified types has this form, which looks like the sigma type, but a bit different. So its verification condition share much uh, with the under specified terms. It checks uh, whether A is a type. It launches a proof search uh, for A. And um, then it replaces the free occurrence of X and B with uh, what is found. And uh, we check uh, that, uh, you know, replaced B, um, we, we check the uh, felicity condition for that replaced B and the return value is a uh, uh, proof diagram for that B, um, that B being a type. Okay, so the biggest difference between this underspecified type and the underspecified terms in the classical DTS is that underspecified type uh, takes a scope. So um, this X provides as the you know, uh, antecedent of the pronoun, but it takes a scope over B. So uh, according to this uh, update, uh, we need a slight revision on the lexical uh, specification of his. Now it has the, uh, some kind of uh, type raised form and we need a slight revision on the syntactic trees here, but the structure is almost the same. But uh, semantic compositions use uh, slightly different uh, semantic representations. So for one A, this is, uh, uh, again, uh, universal quantification, uh, but uh, you know the, this part is under specified type. But uh, for one B, the semantic representation is now um, not a uh, you know pi type. It's a uh, under specified types. Uh, this is due to the you know uh, revised semantic representation. His so his is type weight. So it. Uh, Includes the uh, whole uh, universal quantification within its scope. So what happens? So um, this is a uh, semantic representation for one A. So uh, this uh, new version of DTS um, preserves the right predictions. I will show you that. So uh, okay, this must be a type, and this also uh, this also must be a type, and this is a. Uh, um, uh, under specified type, so so that we have to check this is a, a rightful type, and uh, we conduct a proof search for this. But we can use this uh, information coming from here, uh, the antecedent of the you know uh, universal quantifications. So the uh, same kind of um, inference uh, can be established. So uh, if we have the word knowledge that every boy is a male, then uh, we may find this kind of, uh, you know, uh, proof, proof then. So this is a, a Van Bergel reading for, um, you know, 1A. And this replaces the occurrence of U here and here. And then we get something like this. And uh, there is an, another under specified type. So we need to check if it's a type and blah, blah, blah. But uh, basically, uh, what is happening is the same and uh, same kind of inference holds and uh, we end up in um, semantic representation, which is exactly the same as uh, the prediction of classical DTS for 1A. So uh, there is no problem for the you know, uh, analysis of 1A. But on the other hand, uh, for 1B, now we have the uh, under specified type uh, first, we have to check this is a well-formed type. Then we need to uh, conduct a proof search for this type. However, in this case, we cannot make use of this local context because this um, pi type is embedded within the scope of under specified type, which means empirically that, uh, well, this is a, a pronoun his. Empirically, it means that uh, we have to find the antecedent of his from the 
previous uh, contact, a previous discourse or uh, the world knowledge. And we cannot make use of local context provided by the universal quantification. So um, in 1B now, uh, you know, uh, band var variable anaphora reading is not established. So um, now uh, this is the right predictions also for 1B. Okay, so um, uh, actually the uh, oh, uh, full paper contains uh, more uh, discussions uh, regarding the uh, global and the local accommodations. And uh, actually, I believe that uh, this uh, inter you know introduction of um, uh, the specified type make makes it, makes it uh, easier the definition of uh, global and local accommodation in DPS. But uh, well, uh, I'm running out of time, so I, I will skip those contents. So uh, the summary for uh, the what I have talked about is this. So I have demonstrated that the revision of DPS proposed in this paper, and which under specified terms in the classical DTS uh, replaced by under specified types, uh, successfully eliminates the empirical challenges for DTS regarding the quantificational version of WCO. Okay, so, uh, but uh, I believe that uh, the conceptual and empirical consequences are now open issue. Uh, Okay, uh, we have to discuss it uh, from now on. And I hope that, you know, uh, there are not many, but uh, several um, BTS users. So I need the semantics to use uh, dependent type semantics as uh, his or her framework. Uh, we like this idea and adapt the under specified types. And uh, also, I think uh, what is uh, interesting for me. Uh, about this argument is that uh, the very technical uh, revision of um, type theory, a certain type theory, uh, is directly connected with the uh, quite empirical uh, you know, paradigms in the linguistics. So uh, if we tweak uh, this type uh, detail of type theory, we have the pr quite different predictions uh, you know, about the languages. So it's, uh, uh, I'd like to claim that, you know, in type theoretical semantics, including DPS, uh, the de de uh, theoretical detail and uh, empirical predictions are tightly connected with each other. Okay, thank you. I think I'm running out of my time. So uh, let me stop here. Thank you very much. Uh, let's thank the speaker. So uh, uh, we still have some time, so, uh, if you have question or comment, uh, please raise your hand. For example, please. Oh, okay. Becky-san, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, thank you. I have a couple of uh, questions. So, uh, so it's, I mean, it's nice that we can tweak the type theory and then get prediction in this case, right? But whether it affects prediction on some other previously known cases and spoils the prediction on some other places, right? Okay. Uh, for example, there is a. Yeah. I mean, I know now. I mean, I know. Catapora, although for example, is not common, but still occurs. So inverse linking. Mm -hmm. So would this, I mean, I know, affect the interpretation of inverse linking? Uh, uh, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I don't think catapora is problematic because. Um, uh, antecedent of catapora uh, can be constructed from the world knowledge, I believe. So it's, um, you know, uh, prima facie, it seems that uh, the pronoun uh, refers to the something uh, that is following the pronoun, but uh, actually the contents or the, you know, the uh, denotation or the ent entity in question can be constructed from the, you know, world knowledge only. And uh, well, I can say that because um, there is no quantificational catapora, right? Well, I mean, I know they're complicated. Well, I mean, for example, in an inverse linking, then what happens? You mean inverse linking of uh, quantifiers? Yeah. Uh, then, okay, so uh, that's a good, uh, if that is the case, that's a good question. Uh, I haven't uh, provided, you know, uh, 
inverse scope taking mechanism in DPS yet. Uh, I have earlier paper uh, where I used the continu continuation semantics and uh, by use of continuation operator, I think the you know, uh, quantifiers in the object position can take scope over the you know, other things. Then it can provide the uh, anaphoric antecedent as well. Well, I haven't um, shown it yet, but uh, it's, a, it's a sketch of the idea. Well, yeah, I agree, but, but then it becomes kind of, I don't know, uh, the opposite. So if you say that there is a mechanism to, to handle this, then, then uh, I mean, okay, okay. it uh, will generalize. That, that's a good remark. Um, the thing is, well, this, this uh, takes a longer discussion, but the, the thing is that uh, if you uh, have the inverse, inverse scope taking option, then uh, you don't have the WCO effect there. So in order to you know, observe the WCO effect, you need to choose a quantifier uh, that uh, cannot take inverse scope for you. Yeah. Okay, maybe uh, Alastair, you have the, another question. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I'd like to ask, so I, I, I'd like to ask, I'd like to ask a, a question about the, the data. Um, so you're, 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 you're choosing weak crossover yeah. uh, and you presented this as a kind of clear cut case of here's, a, here's an intuition that we definitely want to capture. But weak crossover is called weak crossover because it's weak. Uh, I mean, there, there, are, there are instances where you have weak crossover configurations where but this is the, the, the judgments are not crisp black and white. So I, I'm wondering what you'll do in, in those cases. So kind of places, uh, cases where, you know, you have something like, uh, who did his father praise? Yeah, uh, I know that uh, this um, paradigm is a controversial one. And uh, I'm now I'm following the, you know, um, uh, there is a book by Hajime Hoji, uh, 2015, and uh, whose uh, chapter six is devoted to the, uh, status of we, uh, quantificational version of weak crossover. And I'm uh, rather, uh, you know, uh, assuming that, uh, you know, the book says about the status. So uh, I am assuming here that if you can, uh, if the every, uh, well, I cho choose the quantifier every here. If you are okay with inverse scope with every, then uh, you won't get this uh, WCO effect. But you might have some other quantifiers with which uh, it is hard to take the inverse scope. Then you must have the WCO effect with that quantifier. For me, it's a uh, floating quantifier in Japanese and uh, a quantifier like 75% uh, uh, of the people. Yeah. So to tell the truth, uh, for me, every and all or the, uh, th three or those kind of quantifier doesn't show the uh, WCO effect. Oh, okay, uh, but, but what, what about cases like um, where you have WH movement? So who did his father praise? Well, okay, the, WH is the uh, homework for me because, you know, uh, DTS doesn't have the, uh, you know, question semantics uh, at this moment. Oh, okay, well, I mean, if you don't have questions, then, then in a relative thoughts. So... Uh, okay, so... Um, that, that's another puzzle. So we need uh, uh, another paper for that. <laughs> but 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 it, and 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 did you do you, do you, uh, another thing? I mean, it, it, there's a, a contrast between weak crossover and crossover. Yeah, strong crossover. Oh. Where because I, I mean it, the reason why it's weak crossover oh. is because you have the 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 pronoun embedded inside as as a, a modifier of mm. inside. The, inside another noun phrase. And yeah. that gives rise to the contrast and why sometimes the judgments don't, don't yeah. so, are not crisp. Uh, current uh, uh, explanation by DDS, uh, oh, current, current DDS doesn't explain the contrast between weak and strong crossover. I don't have the explanation there. So both are treated as bad. All right. So, uh, at this moment, yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, there is some, uh, you know, um, extra syntactical factor there uh, for a strong context. yeah that, i mean it's so, somehow the, the it, when you're embedded 
in an embedded yeah. position, like in these weak cases, then, then there is more flexibility open for how you're able to retrieve yeah. an antecedent. So somehow the distance kind of helps. Mm, maybe you made in that. Uh, may, maybe some interplay with uh, condition B or those stuff as well. Yeah, there, there's also yeah, yeah. The, that, that's also true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh. Sorry. Not not this is a you know a complete answer. But, uh, thank you for the comments. Okay, then time is up. So uh, let's thank the, the all the speaker of the session, including Becky-san again. Okay.